Hi, I'm Andrew Parkinson with Cruising World Magazine, and I'm here at the Miami International Boat Show on a really cool boat. This is the HH50. HH50 is a performance cruising uh, catamaran sailboat, and I'm here with the president of HH, Seth Hines, and also Chris Baylett, who's the commissioning and owner training guru around here. So, uh, gentlemen, good morning. Thanks for having me on. Hello, board. thanks for coming. And uh, tell me a little bit about the boat. Uh, I'll, I'll let you go first on that one. So, the HH50, um, we've got uh, two different models that we do in the 50. There's an OC, which is like kind of the uh, tuned down version of this, mini keels, aluminum rig is kind of your standard. And then the HH50 is our all carbon, um, kind of full carbon package, carbon rig, carbon boom, um, laundron, just like the, a bit more performance based than for the guys that are looking for the speed, it's, as well as just the comforts as well. Um, and you guys are carbon fiber building experts, right? Yeah, I mean, if you look at kind of what we can do in house, the, I mean, as, as we walk around the boat, we'll kind of showcase some of these uh, some of these features. The launch rod, cross beam, some of this integrated stuff that we can do in house actually saves us a lot of money by um, by our team that you know driven by Paul Hakes, um, the one of the H's in the H and H, um, and he's been doing this for a number of years. We built uh, a handful of the gunboat 60s early on at that same yard, um, so we've got experience leading back almost uh, 12, 13 years. Um, <laughs> So in terms of like the lineage of how many boats we've built in this like cruising performance category, we've, we've done a lot. And most of it is all kind of in the custom category when guys come to the table with us. And you were telling me yesterday about this uh, new hybrid drive option uh, you, you're excited about. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, we're very excited about that. So we have a new HH44 coming out, mm -hmm. and that book comes standard with what we call a parallel hybrid eco drive. Uh, it's basically a 100% electric boat uh, with a backup of a diesel. Um, the backup, though, the diesel doesn't just charge the batteries. The diesel actually gives the owner the option. So you can, you can literally spin the shaft uh, with the electric motors. Uh, but if you're running out of juice or it's a cloudy day or it's in the middle of the night and you're low on power, uh, you have the backup of a, of a traditional diesel that can also spin the shaft. So it's a pretty clever concept, and I think it's probably the future of, of yachting. Cool. Sounds good. Now, these boats are built in China, but you have a U.S. design team that that handles everything. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, Merlin and Melvin, um, who've been involved with catamarans for since you know the beginning of time. I want to say with Gino, um, he they've. I mean, we've been working with them for from the beginning, um, and they bring to the table a lot of history. So uh, from the America's Cup stuff to the early gunboat stages, so that trickle down effect that we've had, and just what we've learned from early on, and then. Um, yeah, I mean, working well, with them. Well, more than that, too, is, is we also have an in-house design team. Mm -hmm. So we're one of the few yards that build, you know, boats at this level that, you know, we can offer our custom, customers, you know, their own custom designs. Uh, certainly on the, the larger boats, those are almost you know, custom boats. Uh, this type of boat is semi-custom, uh, but with our own in-house design and a combination of Merlin and Melvin, we can, we can really offer a pretty slick design setup. Yeah. Great. I mean, looking at the structural integrity of the boat, like the talk about the mullions and different types of the loads that we're going to have throughout this boat in areas that you really want somebody to, to sign off that knows what they're doing. So yeah, right. and I don't know if you can catch this on camera, but you know, we're I'm looking around this boat right now. You can definitely tell the quality and craftsmanship that went into this boat, and uh, I'm excited to walk around with these guys and take a look at it. So shall we? Yes, yes, yes. All right, let's do it. Okay. Okay. So here we are in the port side um, cockpit. So you actually see we have two two helm stations. We got one on each side which is what you want in a racing boat, so you can check out your telltales and look at your sail trim, uh, but also just see visibly over the boat. So this is probably, uh, you know, it's a very large helm station, very, very functional. We've got our, our dagger board controls here, electronically driven, and also our traver, traveler controls, and that's on both sides of the helms. Both helms have an electric uh, control with the, with the engines, and then all the sail, the sail lines running and rigging come here as well. Uh, but just a, a really functional and comfortable Helm station, you know, if you're going to be doing watch, uh, this is one of the biggest benches in the category. You can kind of relax and, and uh, sit on watch and take, take uh, note of what's going on outside here. On our 44, uh, the helms are in a different place. So the helms would be a little bit more aft. And what that does is that allows you to have as much solar as you can on the cabin roof. Uh, so the helms are aft and they're swing helms. So you can swing them out uh, and look down the both rails. So you can, again, two helms on each side. Uh, and then you can swing them inboard to get out of the elements when you need to for perfect for cruising. So just showcasing the, some of the carbon that we do have on the boat, we throw accents um, wherever we can. We've done the first couple of 66s that we did, we did in a full clear coat carbon uh, in this same weave. Um, so now we can integrate that into different sections on the 50, the 55, and the 60s. Um, this 50 we're also doing in a forward cockpit model as well, which is going to slowly bring us into the 55 forward cockpit and the 60 forward cockpit. 
Uh, moving forward, we've got three and a half kW of solar on this boat. That's also going to uh, be the same amount that we have on the 44. We use the Solbian or the, um, the Sunbeam. That's what we're going to have on the 44. So you have like a uh, non-skid surface that allows you to actually get up onto the roof if you need to do anything on the sails. Um, on the sail package, we've got a self-tacking jib we've got set up here, and then an overlapping solent that's like a 110 Genoa. Uh, leads us up to the fractional reacher, and then uh, your choice of a masthead, either a, the North G sail or maybe a um, like the A5 that we would from Doyle. There's a bunch of different sail packages we can do in there. Um, right here, you can see the uh, launch ramp that we build in house. Uh, this is an all carbon construction where it's integrated into the crossbeam as well. Um, very sexy. Very functional. Um, the tack of the solent comes up through that uh, Martindale triangle, gets the foot further forward, gets the power further forward. Um, just a really balanced sail package. Seth, I haven't seen a lot of these on the other boats here in the show. Can you tell us a bit more about it? Yeah, so this is probably the most defining feature of the boat, uh, most striking certainly when you look at it for the first time. These are pre preg carbon dagger boards. Uh, so these are uh, built in house again. Uh, you have to bake these, um, and pre preg carbon makes it as absolutely strong and as light as possible. And this is really a crucial component to the performance aspect of this boat. Uh, you know, these really are quite long, as you can see. Uh, so the draft goes from about five and a half feet down to 11 and a half feet on this on the HH50. And what that really allows owners to do is is really perform upwind. So this boat will just walk upwind. Uh, there's symmetrical boards, so you can drop both, or you can drop the windward board if you're in rough conditions. But in racing conditions, you'd ideally have the leeward board down. Uh, and you can really get them quite deep so that it gets down into the undisturbed water and um, you know, really helps you know, keep the boat from sliding laterally. All right, so out here we have our cockpit. Uh, in this boat, we've got actually one of the widest opening doors of the category for a 50-foot boat. Huge, huge opening in the doors to throw wells. Uh, we have a beautiful kind of lounging sofa here. You have an option for a table with an L-shaped seating. Uh, but this owner chose to have a, a long seating here so you can seat 15 people. Uh, the tables are all built in-house, beautiful woodworking and craftsmanship, uh, all foam cord, of course. And we come inside, and uh, lots of headroom, over two meters of headroom in this boat. I'm very tall, I'm six foot three and a half, that half's important. And, uh, you know, lots of headroom, I don't even need a duck coming through the doorways. Beautiful galley here, uh, these owners chose, uh, you know, kind of a, more of an oak colored wood. Uh, you can get high gloss finishes, you can get to pick the type of flooring you want, you pick the fabric you want. Uh, boats are semi-custom as we talked about earlier. Uh, so this owner chose all electric, uh, so an electric range, an electric uh, microwave and convection oven. Uh, and then you can also customize uh, the types of fixtures you want, uh, make the boat really yours and, and uh, as functional as, as your home would be at home. So welcome to the owner's stateroom on the HH50. Um, this is the entire length um, all but the bow locker in the, um, on the port side. So we've got an um, extra large bed all the way aft um, with a couple of little bench seats here, tons of storage, all the closets are cedar lined. Um, then moving all the way forward, you got his and hers closets with a sliding door here um, leading up into the salon. Washer dryer is optional. Um, into a very large master head. The HH44 um, and then on the 50, 55 and the 60 as well we're going to do the hybrid option that's going to be under the bunk. Um, so the beta engine and the electric drive would be right under here. This is going to be on gas shocks so the whole bed will lift up. You'll have full access for a lot, especially the big guys, to get in do a lot of your engine work. Um, and you'll be able to do it in air conditioning, which would be really nice. All right, so now we're down on the starboard side of the hull, and you can see we've got our Jack and Jill shower system. We've got two heads and a shower in the middle. Uh, and then on the forward berth, we've got a, you know, quite a large twin with a, with a bunk bed set up. And then after we have another queen size berth uh, to the stern with uh, another one of those beautiful HH large windows. Guys, thanks for the tour. Uh, really enjoyed walking around the boat, seeing some of these cool features. One thing I really love about this boat is uh, you know, she was designed for performance, but also she's got a real cruiserability aspect to her. 
Uh, so, you know, well done on that. Tell us a little bit more about that. I understand you have some more things in the pipeline here we want to hear about. Yeah, we do. Um, so, I mean, yeah, that's a great point. I think this boat, there's a lot of boats in the 50 foot, you know, price, or 50 foot size segment. And that really fits a sweet spot where kind of owners and operators can, can run the boat. You don't need crew. It's, it's a large enough boat. You've got a great water line, great speed, good performance. Uh, but this boat really is designed to almost be single-handed. And that's uh, that really just fit a sweet spot in the market. Um, yeah, but that is that, that carbon in, uh, that gives us such a solid construction and so much weight savings that you still don't give up much of the comfort or, or any comfort. So this whole boat is trying to find that balance between performance and comfort. And, and I think it was, Found it. <laughs> and so what's coming up for you guys? All right, yeah, so you want to talk about what's next? So um, we've got a couple of changes coming in the lines. Um, the 44, of course, we're super excited about. Um, and that's kind of like redesigned, you know, a lot of the, just the, the look of the boat that we've got coming out. Um, and that's to be with the hybrid drive option. Right? Correct, that's yeah. the hybrid drive setup. So, um, and then in the 50, we're, we are moving into like a forward cockpit option, um, just because it's such an easy boat to single hand. Um, and. Like for me personally, I love that type of sailing, um, being in my slippers and coming inside when I need to. Uh, and then we've got the 60, we've actually extended the 55 and we've got a, uh, a new line coming out for the 60, which um, gives you another two and a half feet between the dagger boards and the rig and then another two and a half feet in the aft cockpit. So um, that's about as big as you want to go as an owner operator, but some of the guys that were in the 55 felt like, hey, if I could just get a little bit more um, and it's actually the boat, I think, uh, especially the designers will tell you too, that every boat looks better five feet longer. Um, <laughs> so it's um, it's a great looking boat and we're really excited about that too. And then we have our 88. So our, our first 88 will launch this year. It's, it's, it'll be the world's largest carbon fiber catamaran. Wow. Okay. Uh, and this, this boat, the owner decided to add a, a fly bridge to him. So it's gonna be just a massive beast of a boat. Uh, you know, comfort for all of his friends and family to come. Uh, but still have that performance, all carbon fiber. So some pretty exciting things coming from the yard, and um, thanks for visiting, everybody. Yeah, hey, sounds like there's a lot of exciting things going on. Uh, we'll be keeping our eyes on you guys here at HH and your team. Uh, Seth, Chris, thanks for the time today, and have a great show. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks for coming by. All right.